I'm only seeing a few people on screen. Is, yes, there, is everyone, everyone here? Cool. Here. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Hi guys. Um, we're so excited to talk to you about Star Wars um, today. So I'm just going to do a quick round of intros. I'm sure you you know, uh, but my name is Jing. I'm, I work on the marketing side for Star Wars at Hasbro. And I'm Chris on design. So. Um, cool. So per usual, I feel like we're a few minutes late, but so we will jump right in and answer as many questions as we can. I'll just do round robin and go through all of them. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get to talk about most of them. So I'll start with Lucas Monster. Hi, yeah, thank you for having me back on. I really appreciate it. It's always nice to to be able to join these and talk to you guys. So I appreciate it. Um, yeah. My first question is, at the Hasbro 1027 event, a new subline of the Black Series was announced as the Clones of the Republic line, which is super awesome, by the way. I'm really happy about this. But in this reveal, we saw the Mace Windu and 187th Battalion two-pack. Will this line be limited to two-packs, or will it be like single releases as well? Yeah, so... As you know, that is a two pack and the Clones of the Republic is a Disney program. Um, and we're lucky enough to share that Mace and 187th uh, clone pack, as you mentioned with them. Um, so for future items, definitely check in with shopdisney.com um, and there are more details there for other items as part of that program in the future. So nothing to share beyond that pack right now, uh, as currently we just have that two pack, which yeah, I'm glad you. that you like, because we, we love that pack as well. We adore that pack. Thank you. Well, thank you. Geek Astronomy. Hi, good morning. So um, I know vehicles are something that's really expensive to make, but we had Sabine on a speeder bike in Azoka, which absolutely beautiful bike, beautiful looking, what it would be figure. Any chance of getting something like that? Uh, I'm assuming you're asking in regard to vintage collection scale. Is that correct? No, I'm I'm looking at the Black, uh, Black Series set scale. Um, yeah, so um, nothing we can announce or talk about. I mean, w there's no plans right now for that. Um, speeder bikes certainly work better in Black Series than other vehicles do in Black Series. Um, so the chances are higher that way. But uh, no no plans for that to tell you about. Um, if you guys are are really interested in vehicles and things like that beyond figures for Black Series, I'd love to see like top want lists and stuff. That would be super meaningful to us because it's it's not that we don't want to do them. We want to do the right ones for you guys. So, okay, and Thank that uh, agreed. That was a cool one. So yes, I mean, and I mean, just that scene where you know she's riding it and skids underneath the ship and. <laughs> Yeah. I saw that and automatically thought figures. <laughs> <laughs> I want that bike on my shelf. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, just keep letting us know um, in, in yeah. terms of like exactly what Chris said, and we'll definitely keep that in mind. I'm glad that yeah. that moment left an impression, too, because it definitely did on us. Yeah, we've we've done other speeders and stuff in Black Series in the past, and I don't think that will, will end. It's just, like I said, doing the right ones for you guys, so. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. The Force Guide. Hi, everyone. Uh, first, <clears throat> I apologize. I'm under the weather, so my voice is not uh, normal. <laughs> so, uh, Rebel Season 4 looks of the Ghost Crew and Vintage Collection are coming in the Ghost HasLab and the upcoming Pulse exclusive Sabine and Chopper. Uh, Rebel Season 1 looks of Kanan and Zeb were pipelined as well. Can you say if there's still hope to get vintage collection figures of Ezra and Hera in their early Rebels looks and Sabine in all of her various color schemes? Yeah, I mean, nothing is off the table. I think anything is possible. We just definitely want to hear from the community on what uh, makes sense. We actually did pipeline Ezra in, her, in his earlier looks at London Comic Con as well. Um, so that's coming. And obviously, we can't talk about anything that hasn't been pipelined or revealed officially. Um, but in general, like, you know, we obviously went in with the ghost and we put a lot of figures out there tied to Ahsoka and Rebels um, pipelines revealed or, um, you know, released already at this point. So definitely keep we have all of those in mind. If there's any specific requests, just let us know. 
Yeah, and I think ranking ranking those requests too amongst all the other TVC figure requests is important for us to understand like where those where those early Ezra looks and stuff would fall relative to other things because we want to get you guys everything you want. Uh, it's just a matter of doing it all at the right time. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. And I hope you feel better. Um, but thank you for joining us anyways. I appreciate it. Uh, Bosk Bounty. Uh, yeah, good afternoon. I'm, I'm a bit under the weather as well, actually. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you look great, Tim. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> over the worst, I think. Uh, but thanks for having me on again. And um, yeah, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, it's always good. Uh, so my first question is the reveal of the Clone Trooper 4 pack, the Phase 2 clones. Uh, they seem to have a more of an in-scale hel in hel helmet. Um, that's hard to say. And a thicker visor as well um, than the single carded version from the Andor uh, card. Uh, is this a new sculpt? And has this come about due due to fan feedback specifically about the removable helmet on that on that figure? Well, those those figures in that four pack are uh, non removable helmets, so that's that's the difference there. So yes, it is a it is a, a different sculpt, a different helmet than the the individual figure. I feel like on that individual figure, um, the removable helmet was a, a nice play feature and point of differentiation there. But then the the figures in the pack went with the the non-removable helmets so i think those those sort of things will just are are part of the repertoire of what we can do with tvc and and variances um we love hearing all the discussion about removable helmets non-removable helmets swappable heads and helmets because i think there's there are there are powerful opinions on all sides of that um and we will probably in an effort to to answer all the requests from all the fans do both things in different ways going forward. Um, okay. But it's, it's not like there's a right way to do that. There's, there are different things that go into decision-making for each of those. And, and we'll just evaluate that as we go. But this one felt like non-removable helmets on those figures and those updates made sense. Yeah. Purely from an aesthetic point of view, they look loads better, but yeah, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, that. absolutely. Thank you, Tim. Uh, toying around, Kevin. Hey, Jane, Chris, good to see you again. And Hi. hey, everybody. Uh, first question is, um, you know, we've sometimes seen popular army builders uh, put aside for like retailer exclusives made available for retailers. And I think sometimes for collectors, it's uh, harder to find to track those down. Um, is this a more favorable strategy to make them exclusives versus like a mainline release? I know, I know there are like regular troopers and army builders available, but like there's some more more um, focused troops. That's yeah. that's the question. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, we have some. We're lucky that we have some great retail partners that we work really closely with, um, and it's a great way to build excitement around uh, with them as well. Um, in terms of like getting them into your hands, like it's something we'll always constantly look. For. It's it's both our goals to get these products in fans' hands uh, when you want them, um, and we certainly have items in both mainline and retail specific. And again, it's a good way to build relationships and excitement as well, and it's a great partnership to have. Um, but yeah, we'll continue to think about you know, where those items go from a distribution perspective and work closely with our great partners um, to get you the figures that you want. Yeah, well, I, I think it's important to note too that those those retailer exclusive items aren't, they aren't taking away from our mainline offerings either. They're, mm -hmm. they're a way to get even more different figures out to everybody. So like Jing said, working with those partners and making sure that that they can sell as many of those as possible and that means making sure all the fans who want them can get them. Um, cool. Yeah. Thank you. That's everyone's goal to get you yep. the figures you want in your hands on your shelves. <laughs> uh, looseness monster, we're we're up to round two. Alrighty. Um. So a part of the Gift the Galaxy reveals, we saw the announcement of the A list subline, which I thought was really cool as well. Um, will this new line replace the archive line, or can we still expect archive figures in the future? Because I was kind of under the impression that it's like taking the place of archive. 
Yeah, so it's it doesn't replace archive as we know it. Um, okay. In fact, the thinking behind a list and it's honestly to give fans as much information about what we're doing as possible. But the a list is getting those iconic main characters on shelf all the time for those like casual fans or like those, you know, people walking down the stores picking up a Mando invader for, you know, their kid or something. It doesn't get more iconic than Vader and Mandalorian. So that's what the A-list strategy is um, out there. It's just for those like casual new fans and really to continue to build that um, collection and continue to build the fan base, which I think we all want yeah. is for the health of the future yeah. of the business um, for future yeah. fandom. So it's, it's, it's that strategy. But of course, we wanted the fan community to know that we're doing that because we wanted to you know, share news about everything that we do because the community wants to know that. Um, it does not replace archive as we know it. So okay. it, it's, it's again, to Chris's point about additive, like it's additive is us wanting to make sure we build out that place for new, new collectors, new fans to come into the line um, as it makes sense. Yeah, that right. makes and, sense. And they're, and they're very specifically like the, the top characters so yeah, that, like, I mean, it's it's a way to welcome new new fans of the shows or of the movies into into the toy world and the collecting world. So instead of them maybe seeing a random figure hanging on a peg and not understanding who that character is, every every new and casual fan is going to know who those characters are, and this gives them a chance to always have that available to to join the party of all the other Black Series figures. So. Yeah, Thank join you. our party. Maybe, you know, someone who picked up a, a Darth Vader is going to be <laughs> interviewing us. If Chris and I are, <laughs> like, in 10 years talking about this. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, that's the whole. We always want to continue to build that fandom. Thank you. Uh, Geekstrotomy. Hi. So this, this actually can build on that last question, talking about characters. Um, is the Rise of Skywalker figure line completely dead because there was a great Poe outfit when they were on that desert planet. And I, I mean, I've been waiting for that figure since I saw Rise of Skywalker. And I mean, he's, he's a main character and kids love Poe. Yeah. Um, nothing's off the table. I mean, that's the, the beauty of the richness of the worlds of star Wars is we've got so many places to go and play. Um, we tend to look to those, those stories for anniversary beats and try and find ways to to build a larger story in the line for the year as we get to those things. Um, I I love seeing suggestions and requests for specifics like that from you guys. That's that's awesome data for us. Um, I would encourage more discussion along those lines. Like what are those top figures that that you guys feel like we're missing? Um, because that that helps us get them to you quicker. The more we know of what your wants are, the better we can deliver on them. Thank you. Yeah. All right, the force guide. All right, the vintage, <clears throat> the vintage collections, sturdier new card backs are holding up to shipping and in-store wear far better than before. And retros got new thicker cards too, but we're seeing an issue with both thicker cards. When packed in Hasbro shipping cases, the blisters of the opposing figure rubs against the card are leaving a rectangular wear mark. With many interested in card collecting, is there anything that might be done to reduce that card back you know, rash? Perhaps go back to putting tissue between the cards like the multi-packs have been doing? Um, yeah, so I will say, I will start off by saying we are very aware of these concerns. Like obviously we keep a pulse on um, the community in general. So. Um, we've actually talked about it in the past. Um, this extended team honestly has been working really hard on like testing and working through the situations and hearing feedback and suggestions as well. So rest assured, like we're very dedicated and we're aware of it. In fact, we actually talked to them recently and in, in general, I think they just um, want to hear from anyone that has any issues to contact Hasbro Consumer Care um, as well. So I know we talk about it in like the, you know, community and Facebook groups or, you know, and fan sites along those lines, but for sure um, also reach out to consumer care because we'd love to document it as well. So that's something we, we 
just want to hear yeah. from you and would appreciate your feedback. Um, but yeah, rest assured, we're we're aware and working on it. And um, your suggestions and thoughts are something we we definitely also keep in mind. Yeah, and and anybody who has sees that issue show up, document date codes and stuff for us too. That that is all super helpful for our our consumer care team. So knowing exactly when those figures were handled, how they were processed, they can track all that back through date codes. And that'll that'll really help us put a finer point on why it's happening because it's not it's not consistent and it's something we're we're trying to resolve. So glad to hear you guys are aware of it. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Bosk Bounty, Tim. Yeah, thank you. Uh so are you able to talk a little bit about the uh, four packs, the army builder four packs? Um, I feel that collectors would have been far more likely to buy multiples of the new night troopers four pack. Had you not put Enoch in there, um, I, I for one would have bought, you know, multiples of that pack if it was just four straight troopers. And I think also there's people out there that would probably want a character as big as Enoch from uh, the Ahsoka show on their own card. Same can be said for the um, Tuscan Raider four pack with the Chieftain. He probably would have been better on his own cards. So it's almost like we're sort of annoying two two sets of people here. And I think maybe maybe leaving money on the table because you know people aren't going to buy as many. So could you just talk about how you know decisions are made on the construction of those? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, thank you guys for the feedback on that stuff. Like that's yeah. super important for us. Um, the i'll say on on those two and kind of how just generally how we have approached those troop builder packs in the past is we've done uh the bulk of the pack being the troop builder and then including a lieutenant of some form um in the past we've been lucky in that we've done stormtroopers or or clone troopers where a lieutenant is also a troop builder um so that that's I think that's probably the ideal that we want. Um, but in an effort to to be able to bring those those Tuscans, which the general Tuscans do feel like troops and something that you could build out, um, in looking for a a lieutenant, for lack of a better description, in there, the the chief felt like the right one. And and in some ways we still feels a little bit like a troop builder. Enoch was one that that we probably pushed a little too far on and hearing that feedback from you guys is just great learnings for us to modify that stuff going forward and to to pull back a little bit and kind of reassess how we make that decision on that that figure in there so i i, I think it's like these sort of conversations are invaluable for that sort of direct feedback from you guys um because we're we're always looking to fine tune and those troop builder sets are an important part of what the line does and we want to continue those yeah yeah no right. i appreciate the feedback um definitely keeping that in mind yeah thank you cool toying around kevin <laughs> you're up. um no i'm ready i'm prepared um <laughs> i just wanted to say i just saw the uh i know this wasn't from before but it just i just saw the phantom menace retro figures uh from this morning yeah. those look awesome <laughs> Get the uh, galaxy. You can definitely go yeah, check, you know, Star Wars yeah. for that. Uh, yeah, great to see those. I'll probably pick those up too. Um, uh, with Ahsoka, you know, the, the series recently wrapping up, you know, and not no sign of media, new media coming out soon. Can you confirm, like, after you release and announce, like, a Carson Tava Black Series or Vintage Collection, what's the focus? Like, what, what is there, like, a certain era that you're going to look at, a certain trilogy, uh, something like that? But the Carson yeah. Tava part is mainly the first part of the question. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I love that and can you, you look? Can you in. look into this photo while you answer? Oh, my God. How do we <laughs> say no to the photo? And signed and everything. Oh, man. I will say, Kevin, you're not the only one. Actually, his name got brought up in an interview earlier this morning. So it, it's definitely, again, to the community. I bet it's Ryan like, Dole. I bet it was you... Ryan Dole from Toy Anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> did you, like, tell him to do it? <laughs> That'd be funny. We, we're just a little biased. But, uh, yeah, let me give you an yeah. opportunity to answer. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's it, I think 
things like that, like if there are requests in general to answer your first part, if there are requests, definitely let us know. I know that <laughs> there were, oh gosh, there were fan polls and, you know, interviews like this, like definitely keep those conversations coming. He's obviously, we're huge fans of him, Kevin, you know that, like we're huge fans of him in general. And I know he's a huge Star Wars collector as well. And we recently did his helmet um, as well. So I, it, I was him for Halloween. So yeah. yeah. Oh no way. Chris <laughs> yeah. was Yeah. Chris was for Halloween. Um jacket so... and all of it. Yeah. Oh, I, I need to see those pictures. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here's I a patch. That's it. That's the, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of like, you know, with with other entertainment, there are new shows in the works as we all know about. So we'll definitely lean in when it makes sense. And there's also so many so much entertainment um, that we're lucky enough to have in the Star Wars universe to dig into as well. So there's nothing specific that we're saying like that's the thing where we're fully leaning in. We definitely have a lot to to lean into and definitely taking um, some notes from the community in terms of what they want to see as well. So all of that goes into our consideration and, you know, just casually put that figure, that picture back up. <laughs> I thought you were going to do that. <laughs> It's top of mind. <laughs> you know, you already have uh, and a, I think too, like you guys continuing to do polls and brackets and voting and seeing which figures always come to the top. When Carson Tiva is is always coming to the top of all those polls and like is a repeat, like that's that's important data for us. I mean, we honestly like that you guys do so much work for us. And what it does is it lets us get you those things that are most meaningful to you guys. So yeah. that's 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 really what this is all about is delivering what you guys want. And and if that's the figure that we want to prioritize over other stuff, man, we need to know that and make it happen. So yeah, and it's it's not just polls. Also, like we we hear like what you guys say on your channels, for example, and the commentary These, and things like that. Like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, you know, definitely let us know. Sorry, guys, awesome. Kevin, you were saying something. Oh no, I was saying you know the X-wing is already there. Uh, the X-wing pilot body is already there. Um. Yeah, that's all. We're 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 ready. That's all I'm saying. We're ready. <laughs> Thank you. Um. All right, Lucas Monster. Yeah. So I have apparently a lot of uh, two-pack questions today, but uh, recently we saw the Phase One Lieutenant and 332nd two-pack from the Ahsoka show revealed, which is a dream set for me. It looks incredible. It's really nice to get that 332nd updated on that newer like 2023 body. But uh, I've seen a lot of confusion going around about the name of the Phase One Lieutenant being named Lieutenant rather than 501st. Um, could you give me a little bit like what goes into the naming of these figures? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a back and forth with our partners at Lucasfilm. This one, I I think I was on vacation when this one was all happening, so I'm not sure. We could probably look into it and get you more data. But mm -hmm. um, generally, it's a it's a conversation with looking to to differentiate from previous releases of similar figures, so that when fans go searching for that online, that they can they have something specific to search for to find those figures. That's where a lot of the parenthetical descriptors will come from for figures is like, how do we differentiate this Mandalorian from this Mandalorian? And because somebody going online and searching for the Mandalorian Black Series is going to get a lot of stuff. But if they're looking for the Mandalorian from this planet, then they can get a very specific one. And so okay. sometimes the, the naming comes from that sort of concern is just making it easier for you guys to find. Yeah. Um, and and we want to be accurate with that and and nail down all the the details to make that that search as natural and fluid as possible. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Geekstronomy. Okay, so the first two questions I had there were questions that I had asked if any anybody wanted me to ask questions of Hasbro. Those are what they sent me. Now this one is actually from me. I want to know what is the top figure that the design team really wishes they could do. And that would be for Black Series or Vintage. I mean, what what do you guys sit there and go, man, this would be a great figure. I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good timing. <laughs> Perfect. Um, 
Wow, that's a that is. I mean, for me, I mean, I I told you guys I I dressed up as Carson Tava for Halloween. That's a that's a fun <laughs> figure for me. Um, but um, for for Black Series and Vintage Collection, those are both kind of Eric and Emily are kind of entrenched in those. Um, we can try and ask those guys that question and see what see what data we get from them. Um, for me, working on retro. Um, Man, there's some there's some fun figures on retro. I won't answer all of them because I'm getting to do some of the ones that are most important to me. Um, more on that later. Um, <laughs> and not, not later today, later in the future, later. Um, I didn't mean but, to put you on the spot. No, it's it's good. I mean, it's it's fun stuff to think about. And for me, big dream projects are things like the sand crawler for TVC would be an amazing project. Um, and I, I will preface that by saying there are no plans to do a sand crawler. This is not an announcement that we are doing a sand crawler. None of that. <laughs> but um, if you guys keep wanting a sand crawler, keep keep the word going. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, you guys that's are the elders at Santa's workshop, so you have control over everything. So I mean, we're 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 just the fans out there. I mean, you guys can do whatever you really want. Well, we're like you said it. We're the elves at Santa's workshop. We don't write the wish lists. You guys write the wish lists. We make the things that you guys want. So, yeah. so yeah, you yeah. you need to answer that question for for us. So, thank you. Yeah, I mean, you didn't ask me, but I will say just to throw it out there. Like for me, I love I love. I actually said this before in an interview maybe a year or two ago that I love a Mother Talvin figure too. Um, she just like really resonated me and and resonated with me in Clone Wars. So I I think she's just like a super cool figure to potentially do um, as yeah. well. Yeah, I remember that interview because that was before Jing even knew that we were going to see Night Sisters in the new Ahsoka show. So that was uh, I had no idea. yeah yeah yeah. And I was like, she's so cool. <laughs> um, anyways, Force Guy, Steve. Uh, right. <clears throat> uh, very recently, Ross Discount Stores have gotten a lot of new Star Wars Hasbro products from the Black Series, Vintage Collection, and Retro that don't even have any shelfware. Some are even Walmart exclusives. Walmart, <clears throat> Walmart only sometimes seems to get their exclusives in physical stores. Then lots of stock ends up on sale at fan channels or deep discount retailers like this? Is there something that can be done to help Walmart get their exclusives to consumers to avoid this closeout cycle? Yeah, so uh, to be honest, I'm not aware of any specifics of that happening, but something we can absolutely bring to the Walmart team and to our sales team, um, since we do work really closely and we partner with them really closely. Um, they are one of our key partners, as you guys know, and obviously everyone's goal is to get those figures in the fans' hands. Um, and we know, you know, firsthand that Walmart is also very focused on that as well. So it's good information to have, and we'll definitely, you know, continue the conversation with them and partner with them closely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bosk Bounty, Tim. Thank you. Uh, so collectors have noticed the difference in white tunics of the Vintage Collection Thrawn figure and the one that came in the ISB or in the officer's four pack, the ISB officer. Um, is that something you are aware of? And was it deliberate or is it like a like a factory thing? Um, other white figures have also been an off-white color, such as the Andor Phase 2 clone compared to previous releases. And the I notice as well, I don't collect them, but the, the Black Series R2D2, I've seen images of that, the new one versus previous ones, that it's like a slight off-white color not not sort of brilliant white yeah um it it was intentional with the the troop builder pack that that one be a a clean white um we could have gone different ways and done it as a clean off-white but a a pure white in there felt more troop buildery i think and just kind of like generic like oh uh, if you think generically about that guy he's wearing a white uniform so I think that that's where that decision making came from versus like a Krennic figure or a Thrawn where there's where there's actual reference that you can go to and, and say like that's the color of this guy's uniform. And in those in those instances, we're referencing real stuff 
and trying to be very specific with a color that that mimics kind of the dinginess and the wear of a, a, a specific character. I mean, you said it with R2 and, and other figures where it's it's trying to imply some some dirt or life beyond like a little more weathering in those. Um, definitely heard from you guys though that that you've you've seen that difference and are questioning it. Um, so we'll look at that going forward, whether that's something we want to continue to do and differentiate and have different whites that way, or whether we want to kind of standardize to a an off white for imperial officers. That I mean, those are evolving conversations. Um, if if you guys have a specific way that you think works better, that you want us to lean into that off white, please do like continue to have those conversations. Let us know. So, that's yeah, just a little a little background on this. I don't think Thrawn was actually that noticeable until you put him up against the one that yeah. came in the four pack, and then you could really, really see the difference. So yeah, but yeah, thanks for answering anyway. Thank you. Yeah. Right, toying around, Kevin. Um, hi. Um, for the heavy, the Black Series heavy artillery Mando, you know, was that first figure just based on early concepts from you know Lucas Films? And can you let us know for you know the less keen-eyed people, is there a huge difference from that figure and the new deluxe um, figure that's coming out now that he's Paz Vizsla, you know, more more developed as a character? Uh, there's not a significant difference there. Um, it's just we wanted to to get out that figure into the the kind of current line look and make sure that as important as that character is, that he's kind of one worth bringing back and making sure everybody had another opportunity at. Yeah. So for those that are building that new that it's not new anymore, but that black series like um side the art mural, collection, yeah. the mural collection, it's a way to get that figure out there, especially because he was so important in Mando season three as a spoiler alert for anyone. <laughs> you know, if you haven't, please go watch it. <laughs> You're watching the wrong channel. Um, but yeah, like it's it's important to to bring him back out because of his relevance and uh to get that into that collection. Okay. Thank you. This is the way. This is the way. Um, Luke Miss Monster. Yeah. So uh, again, another another multi pack question. I apologize, but um, over the last few months, we've seen several two, three, and four packs introduced into Black Series, whether they were revealed or just pipelined. Um, I know even this morning we got the Super Battle Droid and like C three PO two pack, which I know people have been asking for for so long. So I just want to say thank you for making that. Um, but has Hasbro been like going out of their way to uh, push multi packs in the Black Series again? Because we went so long without them. Yeah, I think um, it's definitely good to hear feedback when we put things out there like this, and also requests uh, for items as well. Like we've heard about uh, troop builder packs for a while, and then we did that in Black Series, as you know, we announced that. Um, so it's it's definitely just like us reacting and adapting what makes sense for the line in the moment, what the fans are requesting and things along those lines. So you actually giving us feedback that like, those are great. We'd love to see more. Thanks for putting them in the line. And, you know, thanks for that plug for Gift the Galaxy reveal that we just did this morning. That is an awesome pack as well. Um, super fun to celebrate the prequels. So keep those conversations coming, keep those feedback coming, because if something we do you like, and you know, there's specific things that you want to see executed that way, let us know, because we definitely uh, want to want to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Geekstronomy. I've, I've actually used up all my pre-approved questions. I don't want to get in trouble and ask something off book. <laughs> um. uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I do have an off book question that's not too out there. So, okay, yes, go Madison. for it. Okay. For it. In the 80s, when G.I. Joe's were coming out, the three and three quarter inch, Hasbro put out little weapons packs for replacing guns and lights. Well, not lightsabers, but replacing guns and stands and whatnot. What is the chance of seeing something like that for the Black Series? Because some adults vacuum up guns by mistake and, uh, they wind up losing weapons and <laughs> uh, uh, I love I love the thought of it. Um it's it's something that I think would probably resonate with more than more than just one person who's vacuumed up something they shouldn't have. Um so I, 
I think that sort of feedback is <laughs> is great. Yeah, there's a lot of nods going on. I've seen those nods from lots of other people. Um, there, there's certainly been more than once where I have replaced a blaster for someone at the office who's had something go missing. So I think the, it's a it's a great idea, and more feedback and more fun ideas from you guys like that are certainly informative for the team. So yeah, I've definitely not had... not off the table by any means. Yeah, I've definitely had my toddler toddler like steal an accessory, and I'm like, where'd that helmet go? And it's just like gone. It's gone. Once your toddler has their hands on something, it's like. Well, I have a cat who's a thief, and he, for some reason, loves guns. I've lost so many G.I. Joe weapons. And he'll he'll take it and look you right in the eye, too, like, I'm taking this, and run. Carry off your, your lightsaber or, or blaster and yes. hide it somewhere. Yeah. The accessories, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, good feedback, and uh, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Thank you. It's a good write-in um, question. I like it. <laughs> Force guide. Right. <clears throat> With HasLabs, the ghost campaign, Hasbro did something different by revealing all of the stretch goals right up front. Have you seen a difference in the fan response due to this change? And do you think this will prove itself as a way forward for future HasLab campaigns? I mean, it it certainly did seem like fans appreciated knowing all that up front. Um, it, was, it was a lot of discussion to get there, but it, it was something we thought was was very meaningful. And it certainly was reflected in all of your feedback about that. Uh, I think that will that will inform future Haslabs. Um, there's there's still the opportunity to to play and and do what's best for a campaign or what we what we think will drive the campaign best. But I think seeing the response from everybody about how how nice it was to understand all that up front was meaningful and and probably a a paradigm shift in how we think about some of that stuff I mean confirming what we suspected. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, we're definitely taking cues from you guys. So if you, uh, if you like that kind of execution, it just seems like the community wants to know. Uh, we definitely keep that in mind. Um, Bosque Bounty. Tim. Thank you. Um, so 2024 is the 25th anniversary of the Phantom Menace. Uh, the Black Series has seen various pipeline reveals that suggest the anniversary will be celebrated in some way. Uh, will the Vintage Collection be celebrating this anniversary too, without naming specifics? Will there be like a mini beat or anything? Or Yeah, so, I mean, it's an anniversary for the line. In fact, at Gift the Galaxy, I think Kevin just brought it up, we have a retro pack for F1 that we just revealed this morning. And even um, when we talked about London Comic Con, we have figures like Dooku and clones and things along those lines. So, like, um, it's definitely, for us, the 25th is just not just the Phantom Menace. It's a celebration of all three movies in the prequels. And that's why you'll see certain items being revealed um, according to all three like the 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 pack the two pack black series that luke and his monster brought up that was f2 for example um so more to come for vintage obviously we can't share anything beyond what we already announced um actually we did announce something today for vintage yep. <laughs> that's a big that's one very good. Fit. yeah um so Definitely, uh, we'll, we'll stay tuned for other reveals as they make sense. Um, but yeah, we're excited to be celebrating the prequels. We're huge fans over here. Um, so we we definitely want to share more news whenever we can. Okay, thank you. You, toying around. Thank you. Um, I know we have we have one bad batch in, in TVC so far. I mean, it's pretty... I think simple question. Is it safe to assume we'll be getting a complete set, just you know, slowly trickling out the whole team uh, in the line? Yeah, I mean, nothing is off the table for sure. I think for us, it's definitely getting the figures out at the right time, at the right cadence, at the right demand by the fan community. Um, you know, we obviously focused on like the ghosts and building that world out recently, for example. So definitely let us know there's nothing that's really off the table. Um, and we just wanted to hear from the community on what makes sense to do. But yeah, that um, that Bat Batch character in the vintage also was a great character to bring out there. 
Cool. Um, I think that might be all that we have time for today, but I definitely appreciate everyone coming in and talking to us and chatting with us for 45 minutes. So um, it's always good to see you all um, and happy holidays and stay tuned. And if you haven't seen those new reveals drop today for Gift the Galaxy, definitely check out StarWars.com too. Um, but yeah, we're hoping everyone has a safe and happy holiday. We can't wait to talk to you soon about more Star Wars news. Yeah, and feel better for those of you who are yeah, recovering. Yeah, seriously. Everyone's yeah. alive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Cheers, very much. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye. Thank you. See you. Bye now. See you.